All right, so looking cool here is with Jim from Dishwala. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Real good, real good, man. So I just got done listening to your new track, Alive. Great tune, I have to say. Awesome, thank you. Now, I got to know, man, why did it take so long for you guys to put out some new music? <laughs> uh, I don't know. We uh, When the whole COVID thing started up, we had a whole kind of fall and, and spring tour lined up. And so it just kind of blew everything out of the water. And uh, so we just kind of, everybody kind of retreated into their own spaces with COVID and everybody went through different kind of phases of lockdown. And, uh, and so it just kind of busted up the whole momentum. So, um, you know, it was a pretty weird time <laughs> in general for, for everybody. So it wasn't super creative for a while. And it was only kind of, as we got for kind of further into it, then we decided to, you know, start writing again and, and kind of get back on track. But for a little while, everybody kind of went their own ways. Um, just with the whole the whole lockdown thing um, you know a lot you know i mean a lot of bands didn't stick out throughout the time they, they you know had time to think and figure yeah. out how to balance their own life and you know it's got to be hard especially when you're on the road as much as you guys are and things like that and you get that big break of being with yeah. you and doing things you haven't done in years and it makes you think like man do i want to continue going out there or do i want to enjoy what i missed all this time it's true. I mean, it uh, it definitely brought us everybody close to home. <laughs> uh, for a while, it started, you know, it got to a point where you kind of felt like you're living on a spaceship a little bit. Everybody, you had your own little bubbles and you travel around in that. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, everybody did it a little differently. I know, I know, you know, I have friends and bands that they just, they doubled down and, and went out and got right in the middle of it. And they all, you know, they all caught it and caught it multiple times. But, you know, most of them were fine, but a couple of them died. <laughs> And, uh, you know, and so it's like, you know, I, I think that worked for most of the people that, that took that approach. And, uh, you know, but they're, you know, you know, obviously you couldn't play live shows in a lot of places, but people were still going out and doing TV work and that kind of stuff. Um, you know, we decided to just kind of close up shop and, and just kind of just, just do, you know, do our own thing until things settle down. So. Uh, now with this uh ep you guys had coming out it's only got three tracks on it i mean you guys have more to go down the road or is you just so, you know. we do yeah we i mean we always have a ton of songs in the in the pipeline so uh um th that actually all these songs came out of almost one session that we did our, it was really the last session that we did in person uh right before covid is where we we kind of got together we, we were doing a uh um, we got to work uh, and be part of a master class with Alan Parsons. Uh, okay. So we were actually his test subjects and we, we, we produced a song together and that's actually on this EP. Uh, so uh, uh, we got together and wrote a bunch of music and, uh, and then did this production uh, uh, thing with Alan. And uh, then we had these other songs that sort of came out of that. And so we decided through kind of the whole lockdown period let's finish out these other two songs and so that's what be, what alive became um and uh um we have a couple other songs that that uh, uh we did as well that may come out later as well so uh, um, uh but yeah i mean i think the next thing is probably getting back together writing you know writing a whole nother sort of bank of music that reflects you know we, we always take music for how we feel at the time and uh you know we we as you know, probably from us, we write a lot of really different kind of kinds of stuff. Like we've got a really diverse, um, all, all all the music we put together over time is you know oftentimes been really really different, and it all sort of comes together back back in the middle and 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 becomes Dishwalla. So, you know, I expect we'll we'll make a new record of some kind. Um, I mean, it's kind of interesting. It's like a, a, an album isn't what it used to be. <laughs> and, right. and people don't necessarily buy albums in the same. So I'd almost rather put out three EPs <laughs> every few months uh, rather than like go through and, you know, wait a huge long time and put 10 songs on a record because I'm not even sure people care anymore. Uh, you know, I have to have patience. When, you, when you're only doing a few songs at a time, you know that those three songs or how many you're doing are going to be great work you know sometimes when people put out 10 12 songs on an album some shit falls through the cracks <laughs> you know what i mean yeah <laughs> yeah i mean we always go for the all killer no filler kind of thing but you know there's always those kind of ones that you know you can put on there because they wouldn't really stand on their own so they can they can you know shelter under the under the stronger songs and it might be just something that you know the band really likes so um 
you know, I mean, that's kind of true on EPs. You stick B-sides on, you know, it's kind of more of the, the traditional, you got one or two strong songs and everything else on there is, is kind of filler. So, you know, in this particular case, I think all, all three of these songs are, are really strong. Um, we just decided to lead with Alive because that one is the one that seemed to resonate with everybody the most. So. Now, your biggest song, obviously, is Counting Blue Cars. I mean, there's no keyboard on that, right? Yeah, actually, there's there's a, there's a whole string arrangement. There's Juno 60 in there. There's uh, um, uh, there's actually a decent amount of keyboards. There's some, some uh, um, you know, live we have uh, uh, B3 uh, as part of that as well. So, um, so there is actually a huge kind of string bed within that whole whole track, which is part of why that sounds so wide. It's not all guitars. Okay, I mean, I was just going from the video from watching it as many, as many times. You know what I mean? I didn't. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, interestingly, I I had uh, uh, joined the band uh, um, as a sideman for the first first record, and so I was there when they were shooting it. But the record company was like, "Nope, you're a band of four. We're going to do the imaging uh, with these four people on the for the first record." So I didn't get my picture taken until I was on the second record. Gotcha. I was just going to say, man, that has to suck when you guys are playing your hit song. You got to go stand on the side of the stage or something. But yeah, no, no I mean, for, for, for live shows and all that, it was, it was always, you know, we did it as a five piece. Uh, but for all the imaging and photographing and things for the, for the first record, record company was very clear. Um, you know, there was a whole thing back then. There was like, Bands of five are no good. They have to be four because the Beatles were four I and mean, they were very old school in their marketing practices. Uh, five was just too hard for people to latch on to and make cardboard cutouts for you and all the things they used to think about back in the 90s. <laughs> so now, now you got bands, uh, you know, there's like, just an arcade fire. There's like nine or 11 people in there. It's like, you know, it's, uh, um, yeah, it, it, the rules aren't the same anymore. Yeah, for so, sure. Man. That's definitely changed up. Yeah. Now, you ever get tired of playing that song, man? Never. No, I, I mean, we can, we can play it in our sleep. We literally do not ever rehearse it ever. Uh, but um, every time we play it, people, you know, there's always a reaction when we play it. So that's, that makes it worth playing every time. Uh, if nobody cared, then I wouldn't have to play that song. You know, uh, it would, you know, it would be different, but, uh, but everybody always reacts when we play that song. So it always feels good to play. A hundred percent. I mean, you know, I mean, I was shit. I was in high school when you guys came out with that one. So it was always, you know, it's a fucking huge hit. <laughs> <That's pretty> yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was sitting at a hamburger habit uh, after my kid's soccer game. Uh, we were sitting out there on the, on the outdoor patio and boom, right on the, on the radio comes right out as soon as we sat down. And uh, my son was like, dad, dad. And I'm like, yep. <laughs> so it's like, you know, we here at the gas station and the supermarket and, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's everywhere. So. Can't, you know, can't be that you know it's, it's crazy to me i mean you know i like i said i was in high school during the 90s there and now i'm i'm older it's i still think when i hear 90s rock man it's like just a couple years ago it's starting to be right <laughs> just up. <laughs> yeah i mean well you know you're still 19 right yeah exactly my mind for sure you know <laughs> so what is it like watching the crowd get older as you go on i mean i know these they got to be bringing their kids and stuff to see you guys so it's got to be multi-generational and stuff it, multi-generational we're we're approaching grandparent like it's it's crazy like you know when we went back out on the road you know we had a, a decent hiatus between kind of 2005 and 2010 2012 we took you know a solid five years off really light schedule for the next couple of years when we really started hitting it in 2012, that's when the first generation came out, came out to the shows. And they were like, yeah, I was too young to come to your show. Or, I grew up listening to this record. And, uh, uh, you know, that was, that was the kind of the first wave. But what's crazy is uh, now those people are old enough and they have kids because <laughs> we're eight years later than that. <laughs> so now they're in their 20s and some of them, you know, we're starting to see grandkids of, of Dishwala. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's awesome. I mean, it's just a whole sort of, um, you know, whole generational thing. So what I always got to kick about is now when you see nineties bands, they always throw like three, four or five of you guys out there together for like one big concert, which is cool. yep. way to relive your youth for sure. You know? Yeah. I mean, we had a big show, uh, that we were supposed to be playing in LA at the Greek theater that uh, had a bunch of, bunch of nineties bands all strung together. And for whatever reason, it just blew up. And so we're not doing it now, but uh, 
Um, but yeah, those kind of shows are always fun because everybody comes out, they're already, you know, there to have a good time. And uh, it's not, uh, you know, it changes, you know, when you're, when you're a young band, they come out and they're like, are these guys any good? Do I like them? They don't even know, you know, you're, you're always sort of winning the crowd over, but um, you know, now usually uh, for those types of shows, at least everybody knows who you are and uh, you know, they're already there with you in the crowd. So uh, it makes the shows easier too. What is it like playing shows post pandemic? I mean, I understand COVID's still out there and stuff. So it's, you know, but a lot of people are not masking anymore and out there just having a good time like we, like we used to before all the crazy. Yeah. Well, we kind of, I mean, we waited a long time, longer than most bands, I think, to go back out. Uh, but then we had the second and third waves of stuff. So um, our first kind of big out was last year around, I guess, November. Um, and it was right, it was post Delta and pre Omicron uh and uh we uh we just kind of ripped the band-aid off and we went to texas and uh and so there was just like literally like ten thousand people not a mask in sight and uh and just people smashed against the stage and crowd surfing and stuff it was awesome people are you know so excited to go see shows that uh the energy is you know as high as it's ever been uh with with everybody you know uh, just kind of you know in the, everybody's into it yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely been a big thrill to finally get back out there. I mean, I, after two and a half years, I went to my first show a couple of weeks ago, and it was a smaller show. It was just Fog Hat, but it was, you know, about a thousand people or so, but it was still weird being around that many people for the first time, you know? Yeah, it's, a, <laughs> it, it's definitely, uh, uh, you know, definitely a little, you know, I got so used to not being around people that it's weird to be in crowds. Mm-hmm. And I'm still I'm still kind of weirded out by it. And I'll, if I get into like a close situation, like it's still, you know, like when you're getting on the airplane, and everybody's like stuffed in the jetway. And you're just like, really? This is like. <laughs> yeah, 100 percent, you know. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, and again, I mean, a lot of people are just like not dealing with, uh, um, you know, they're, they're just over it. So they're just going to live their life. And and uh, uh, but I mean, you know. I, we got people all around us right now. There's, there's a whole other wave kicking in right now. Yeah. And so there's, uh, there's people like literally all around our circle that are, have all just got in the last five days. Uh, so it's like completely, you know, it's, it's all happening again. So it's scary to think about it too. You know I mean? Cause you're, you finally feel good enough to start going back out there. And once you finally do something, you think you can do anything, you know I mean? Like I said, I went to the one show and the very next day, I took my son to WWE where there's 40,000 people around us and right mass in our pockets and stuff and made sure we were at a, a spot where it was kind of not too crowded around where we were, but you know, obviously right. 40,000 people are still going to have people around you. Yeah. Yeah. You just kind of feel like you're, you know, it, it's crazy to think of like not that long ago it'd be like in a crowded club where there's like sweat raining down off the ceiling and like, you know, like, yeah. like, how how much you used to like mix it up with people and now you just kind of like whoa okay stay over there like it's it's you know uh, definitely definitely different uh, but with all that being said and you know you have people close to you getting the virus again do you guys are a little leery about the shows you guys got planned out or what's going through your mind yeah, yeah i mean we got we're we're playing in chicago area uh we're, we're uh doing a show with soul asylum in two days uh Three, uh, three days, I guess. No, two days. <laughs> I don't even know what day it is. Yeah, Thursday we're playing with Soul Asylum in uh, in Waukegan. Uh, it's an awesome theater out there. Um, and uh, I don't know if a you know certain band members are going to make the flight. <laughs> uh, there's all of us have been exposed in the last week to people. So if any of us pop positive in the next 24 hours, uh, we're not making that show. Um, or if we go and then we do test positive, then are we getting it home? <laughs> Yeah. So uh, <laughs> all that stuff gotta be scary for sure, you know. Exactly. So we're just kind of making making various plans. It 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 kind of puts a weird thing into the flight date of like you could totally get stuck somewhere. Um, you know, and if it takes what if it takes two weeks to go, you know, to go negative, like what do you do? So uh definitely um you know, I'm not as concerned anymore about any of the like weird health stuff that could have, you know, before. You know, when it first started out and there wasn't any, nobody had any immunity to anything. It was kind of a, you know, roulette of like who, who would affect and who didn't. And 
you know, most of the people I know, again, did fine, but some of them died. And, uh, you know, I got really messed up as a result. And so I feel like that kind of, you know, especially with all the shots and stuff, like the odds of that are, are pretty good that if you get it, you're going to, you know, you know, everybody you know that's getting it is either doesn't have anything going, going on or they're, you know, they get sick, but it's not that bad. Um, so that, you know, that takes some of the kind of the, the X factor out of it where you don't know what you're getting into, but you know, I don't want to get stuck in <laughs> somewhere for a couple of weeks while you're trying to, you know, get a, get a clear test result. And not only so, that, I mean, it ain't cheap to do a show. I mean, you guys got to fly out and do all that stuff and, you know, yeah, I mean, we we lever our schedule as, as tightly as possible. So, as, you know, if you stick a wrench in that, then it starts getting really expensive really fast. So, um, hopefully, you know, yeah. But but you know, it's that kind of risk risk versus you know, are you going to just not do it then? Uh, so, that's that's the alternative. So, now the one thing I, I noticed that the the trend going on there is that since the pandemic, it's the only do a, a song or two or the three songs like you guys do, but you do a nice tie-in where there's there's merch and there's a bundle and everything like that. I see you guys are doing that too, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. There uh, we're doing a um, couple of different kind of kind of things, uh, and uh, um, they've even you know might even spin up a vinyl of it if we get a lot of traction on it. So. So yeah, I mean, I almost, you know, looking at how my son listens to music, uh, uh, you know, it's like, you know, if you can have that one cool kind of package, then people, you know, be just as into that as an album. And then I think it gives them more money to spend on other stuff. So, um, so I think it's uh, definitely a good way to go. I think we're going to probably, you know, we might stay within the EP realm for a while and just keep putting out different EPs. Well, yeah, I mean, it's got to be hard getting the younger generation to actually pay for music these days, you know? I mean, my kid's 10, and somebody asked me the other day, what was the first CD you bought? And he's like, what do you mean, buy a CD? You he's mean, like, what's a CD? Well, you pay for it. <laughs> no, I can tell Alexa to play whatever I want to hear, or Apple or whatever, you know? Yeah. The concept yeah, I, of paying for music is baffling the younger generation. I know, my son's 13. He's got, you know, these, like, thousand-song playlists and things in Spotify, and you know, but, uh, you know, he listens to eight hours of music a day, so I can't really fault it. Like, it, it works great. It doesn't doesn't work so well. You know, it's just a different a different thing. Um, you start getting a lot of streams, though. We just got a we just got actually got a gold record for uh, Ken and Lucars, um, a new sort of single award from from the RA for 75 million streams. That's awesome yeah. for you. Yeah. So it's uh, um, yeah, it just kind of popped up out of nowhere. Um, and uh um so that's pretty cool so all those gas stations and, and uh burger joints and things are uh, coming yeah. together <laughs> what was the weirdest place that you walked into that was playing one of your songs um gosh probably i heard it once in a church uh the where else um probably the weirdest place was the first place we ever heard it which was like uh, I think was hearing it at a supermarket, like in my hometown, which is this little, like, I live in this little mountain town. And, uh, you know, when that, when that first came out and, uh, I heard it, it was like, you gotta be kidding me. So, uh, it's got um, cool for sure. you know, you, you've made, you've made music. <laughs> <laughs> you walk up to the cashier and be like, that's me, man. Do I get a discount? That's right. Hey, do I get a discount on this or what? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I never get tired of that. Um, now, uh, one thing I got to ask you about is I've seen that JR has been doing a lot of stuff on Reddit, talking to fans and things like that. And mm -hmm. I know certain bands like Saliva are doing like one off shows where they have the singer come back. Was there, do you guys still talk? Is there any chance of doing something like that? Or is it you guys? Really no, that will never happen. Um, you know, it's interesting because we parted ways with JR in 2005. Right. And we haven't had a single Dishwall interaction since 2005. Well, actually, we had one in 2008 where we were going to come back and we were doing a show with, uh, what was the name of the show? Um, oh, what's a, it's a giant show up in Wisconsin, uh, 75,000 people. Uh, so we that was going to be like a re-entry show. And he literally like backed out the week before the show. 
Uh, we committed, we were on the top, we were headlining with Matchbox 20 and forget all the other bands. Like there were some good, good bands on there. Um, you know, really plum slot. That's where we actually hired Justin. He came in on a week's notice and slayed the gig right. in front of 75,000 people. And we've never talked since. And uh, so, um, you know, he literally has not been involved in the project since or ever, but is always sort of right there in the fringe trying, you know, just, just sort of pulling, you know, he's active again now, right now, that's because we're putting out content. Um, so it's a weird kind of, I wish he would go off and do it. You know, he, he always wanted to be a solo artist. That was his choice. He's the one that left. Uh, you know, I, I wish him the best of luck, but I also wish him to stop, you know, sort of riding on the, you know, we've had so many different instances where he portrays to himself to be a dishwala. And and you know, even even just this last week, he played a show in LA area where everybody at the show thought that he was that that it would they were seeing Dishwalla on stage because that's how he'd represented it. Right, it's like right. you're, you're not into and like like you haven't been. It's been like 17 years. Like get a life. Uh, so <laughs> I, you know, I have I I have my own my own uh, 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 opinions on that. But I, I think everything is just you know he's a he's a phenomenal singer uh, in his own right. Um, but you know the the band has moved on and and is as solid as ever with or without without him. So um, you know I don't I don't ever see that happening again with the, with with him coming back into the fold. I mean, the only reason he, I he's up, made like, his he's made his choices and his and his misrepresentations over the years, and so he has to he's going to live with that. Right. I mean, like I said, the only reason I even brought it up is he just did a, a Reddit where he was like, you know original singer of Dishwala, ask me anything. And it was just like, oh, well, maybe. Yeah. But. Yeah, I, I wish I wish he'd portray himself as just badass singer J.R. Richards, who doesn't really sound anything like what you would want to have in Dishwala now. Uh, uh, because really, he's, I mean, his, his, he's a much more sort of operatic style. And it was always a fight to get him to sing in Dishwala. And, you know, that's, that's why it's ironic with him sort of, he's got on this 17 year campaign of saying, I did everything, I am everything, I am Dishwala. And quite honestly, dude, we, we, you know, we held this, we made him, forced him to the table every step of the way uh, to be a rock singer. And the only reason that he was able to ever get there is because of what, you know, the effort and the cohesiveness of the band to provide a unit. So I just wish he would go and be all that he can be and, and ride on that strength. And uh, because it really kind of detracts from what Dishwala is now. Right. Uh, uh, and Justin's, you know, a phenomenal singer and, and can outperform, you know, he's, you know, Justin's a 10 times the performer that Justin, that, uh, that JR is, um, you know, you'll have a much better time at our, at a show now, uh, because, uh, uh, you know, Justin can work a crowd like, you know, any great singer can. So, um, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's uh, you know, I wish him the best of luck, but I, I, I also, you know, he needs to stop misrepresenting himself as something that's connected to dishwallet well see that's the thing with technology these days they can go out and do whatever they want if it wasn't for social media and being able to go ahead and write all this stuff up if a fan went to a dishwallet show they wouldn't they didn't have the wikipedia to look you know what i mean they'd be right. like oh, that's dishwallet that's great <laughs> you know, yeah. like, no uh you guys are doing a fantastic job i mean i, I did see you guys a a couple years pre-pandemic and it was just as good as when i seen you when i was in even better, actually, than when I was, you know, 13, 14, checking you guys out. I've spent a lot of time going back, looking through older reels, and I can't even, I mean, there were a couple of eras that I really think that Dishwallow is, like, really at its peak and, and really kicking butt, but in my opinion, those, the band is the strongest element of all of that, and the only thing I don't like about that is what the singer's doing, right, and right. so, so going forward, uh, the you know, we have all of those elements, plus we have the singer that engages in the way that, that um, you know, Justin's not as precise a singer as, J, as JR is. I mean, JR is almost technically flawless, uh, that which is nearly impossible for any singer uh, anywhere. Uh, but that's not really what makes a good show, in my opinion. I'd much rather that uh, Justin breaks a note here and there uh, and have a, you know, an, an actual passion performance that, that, you know, people will feel, so. If you just want to sit in the back row and close your eyes and whatever, but uh, you know, then you just go listen to the record. Right. <laughs> right. You can make it perfect on the record every time. 
So, uh, so you know, we're much more of a band band uh, in, in this iteration of Dishwa than we ever were with in the County Blue Cars days or, or you know, up to that kind of, uh, you know, we're, until Justin came on board. So, um, you know, I, I stand by us. Our, our, I stand by us 100%. <laughs> and well, I, awesome. It's a lot, a lot more fun. Yeah, for, for you to be doing this long and still enjoy what you're doing it says a lot, you know, I mean. Yeah. People in bands that hate each other's guts that are still go out there, and you could you could feel that when you're watching the show, you could tell that it's yeah. not fun for anybody. <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. No, we're all. I mean, we did a, we did a show with Tears for Fears, and like those two guys don't like. I mean, they're like Siamese fighting fish. They can, they enter. It's a whole dance to just keep them so they never actually see each other until they walk on stage. And uh, you know that I can't couldn't imagine going to work under those circumstances. So, uh, you know, it's, it's nothing like that for us. We just, you know, it's, it's always an opportunity to just hang out and have fun. And, uh, you know, we are, we're all, we're all best friends. So. So now if, if this new batch of COVID doesn't slow you down, you guys have a, a full summer planned out for you? Yeah, we've got, uh, um, let's see, we've got a pair of shows in Texas that uh, are uh, coming up. Uh, we're playing Austin and Houston. Uh, then we got another Chicago area show, I think September. Uh, we're only doing big, sh bigger shows. And uh, so uh, um, those are the ones we've got on the books so far. Um, we are not talking about doing any, any traveling runs yet. I don't know. If, um, again, sticking yourself on a bus with a bunch of people. Um, you know, the, our friends that did that had mixed results right. with that for, uh, for how that played out. And it's really hard to keep those bubbles kind of tight. Um, kind of takes the fun out of it too. <laughs> so, so we're kind of cherry picking gigs and, and, uh, you know, our agents doing a really good job of just finding, you know, nice, big, big, uh, um, uh, kind of package shows that we're doing, uh, with, uh, with different events and things. So, um, so I think it'll be, I imagine we'll probably do another, probably, probably 10 more shows this year. Cool. Uh, you know, which is, is lighter, you know, we usually, normally would be doing like 40 shows a year well like, like you said you got to pick and choose you know what i mean i mean there's so many yeah. bands that are out there on the road and when you get to it it may not even be the singer there because he got sick <laughs> you know it's just like exactly all right, someone's <laughs> filling in. well that's not what i paid for man i want to see the band i didn't ask for fucking joe schmoda step up right. somebody cool exactly you no know? <laughs> yeah that's that's definitely uh um so I don't know, the, you know, the whole COVID thing is an X factor. We'll I have to see how that all plays out. So keep my fingers crossed for, for this week. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Especially with, you know, you're in our <laughs> well, people are watching, they want to follow up with you. They want to uh, get that package that we talked about, or they want to see hopefully catching you guys and that actually being you at these shows where do they go, what do they do for everything? Yeah. <laughs> The, the, the uh, dishwalla.com or oh, oh dishwalla yes uh, dishwalla.com uh, we've got a, a whole store uh, up on that and that's got all of our touring and show information and uh, and then yeah you can you can buy the buy the merch directly from there and uh, it's a um, one stop shop for everything dishwalla sweet all right man it was a pleasure speaking with you and uh, hopefully I get to catch you on one of these shows in the next year yeah where where are you based out of I'm in Buffalo. Oh, you're in Buffalo. Awesome. Gosh, that's the, that's the coldest I've ever been. <laughs> we came out there in a, in a February. We were playing with, we were touring with Cheryl Crow, and it was like 80 degrees in Santa Barbara where, where we lived at the time. Got on the plane, didn't even think of it, didn't even pack a jacket, got into Buffalo in February and was like, nearly died walking around town. You're like, wow, it's like, it says it's 35, but it's really like, you know, wind chill of like, you know, 15 or something. Yeah, we and, uh, Two seasons here. It's either winter or summer. <laughs> yeah. And it doesn't go in there. It's 80 degrees out today. And next week it's gonna go back down to the 30s and it might even snow one more time before. Right. I just I live in the mountains. I it just snowed today at my and uh, at my house. So uh, um go figure. Yeah, exactly. Guess we call that spring now. <laughs> well, you know, of course right. locked in one to have this weather just mess with their minds too. <laughs> yeah maybe i just don't know what date it is anymore <laughs> <laughs> all right buddy take care of yourself awesome great to talk with you thank you, you too, man. Okay. have a good one